Welcome back to another episode of KTM Summer Grill. My name is Simon Chapman, and today I'm joined by SpeedCafe.com editor Connor O'Brien, and we've also got a special guest in Repco Bathurst 1000 winner Chaz Mostert. Chaz, welcome to the show. Hey boys, thanks for having me. Chaz, what a year it's been for yourself and Walkinshaw and Drew United. Obviously, winning this year's Bathurst 1000. What a race it was for you guys. Run me through it. Obviously. You know, it wasn't all plain sailing. Um, you had that little tire issue halfway through the race. Were there sort of some moments there where it looked like it might slip through your grasp? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, good to reflect on the race. Like once I finally got home, watched it and see how it all panned out. And I think the way you sum up the race is the, the first 100 laps were, were so quick, but then the last 60 really slowed down. But um, yeah, during the day and as the race went on, I mean, it was the early tire drama. I think around that, was it 49 lap mark or something like that? Um, I can't remember exactly what lap it was. Yeah, it was a bit bit concerning because, you know, the guys at the front, they've got a, a really hot pace on. Uh, without any safety cars, you, you would think you were not going to claw that back. But um, obviously, the car was fantastic. Lee was driving fast as well. And we were able to get that deficit back down and, and get ourselves back in the race. So, um, yeah, at that point, at the time, I thought oh, it was going to be a really hard task, but I'm um, just trusted in the car speed and trusted in the car setup and, and, and trusted in the team and their pit stops and the strategy. And um, there's, you always have it yourself a chance in your head of, of getting back when things go wrong around there. Yeah, Chaz, uh, we know with uh, Zach Brown, you know, there's been some good bets going on with uh, Ricardo and Pato Ward. And I know there's been a little bit of uh, conversations with, uh, between you and him. Uh, so, yeah, tell us a little bit about, uh, about that sort of stuff, um, you know, talking about potential rewards sort of for, uh, for getting the job done. Um, yeah, it's quite funny. We didn't really talk about too much kind of stuff. I mean, Zach's a real great operator. He puts those incentives for, for most of his drivers to, to try and push forward and get to drive some cool cars of his collection. Or, um, I don't know, I was actually personally hitting him up for a free McLaren car, but that was apparently a bit too, uh, too expensive for him. So, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, then we did the press conference at Bathurst. And then, um, you know, one of my good friends, James Moffat, said that he's got one of his old man's old cars there. And obviously, a pretty cool history car, um, which I had to read up on, to be honest. I'm not, not really um, well known in that era. But um, once James said that and I pushed her to drive the Monza, that'd be really cool. And and then I thought I'd uh, try and sweeten the deal with, with Zach Brown to see if um, I think, obviously, it'd be very special for me to, just to drive that car in general and, and any cool history car in, um, in, the, in the motorsport world. But I think it'd be pretty special to see James drive that car because, um, you know, knowing what his dad did in it, stuff like that. I think that would just be a really heartwarming moment for for, the, for us watching on to see that happen. So um, I'm glad Zach said yes. I'm not sure when we're going to make it happen. Obviously, all around the world with the COVID stuff. And then obviously, we're in our off season now as well and, and trying to enjoy that. So um, I'm sure down the track, we'll make it happen at some point. But um, yeah, so cool that Zach's got an amazing car collection and he offers that to, to his drivers to for incentives. To, to, to try and win races to, to make that happen. I think it's uh, we're a real special moment when we can make that, that catch-up happen and drive that car. Chaz, what was sort of the, the feeling in the camp like leading up to this year's race? You know, I, I guess leading in to it, you know, sort of the, the odds looked pretty favourable. Obviously, Lee had a really strong run at last year's Bathurst 1000. You know, he'd only just come off full-time driving. Was there sort of a maybe a, a, a quiet sense of, you know, optimism within the team that, you know, a, a win was really on the cards for you guys this year? Yeah, the, the feeling for us was really bizarre this year. It felt like the whole team felt really relaxed. And I think because we were so relaxed, we did our best work. And, I mean, we had the obviously the four weeks lead up with SMP. And for us as a team, our focus was there to, to try a heap of different things with the car and mainly focus on trying to make the car better to hit the ground running next year. But obviously that also led into this year's Baptist to try and make a, a better package as well. So we didn't really hit our straps that well at Eastern Creek. I felt like we were much stronger in our last weekend there. But um, come Bathurst and a different track service, a different style of track and, and similar settings that we were running at SMP, the car really come alive. And we felt that from practice one, you know, different settings around there seemed to really work at Bathurst. The car was a fair bit different than what we ran at the 500 at the start of the year. Um, but yeah, just felt really relaxed. We did minimal changes. Lee was super quick in the car. I actually learned some stuff from him for the first practice and, and how to change a few corners that he was doing really well. And we just really bounced off each other well. And 
then the off-track antics between me and Lee. And, um, we're both a bit of jokers. We're having a bit of fun through the week and staying in the house. And um, come race time, we, we knew we had probably the quickest car um, and whatever the result would be, we would be. And um, we'll let the Bathurst gods decide. So we were just super relaxed. It's kind of really weird to sum up how relaxed we were. Yeah, it's an incredible story, isn't it? I, I think it's got to be one of the, the feel-good stories of the year, Connor, is obviously Lee getting his, his first win after all these years. You know, he, he spoke um, afterwards about how, you know, back in the day, he, he just had no luck. You know, even so, so much so that he went up to the top of the, to the mountain one day after one of the races where he had a DNF and he, he dug a hole in the dirt and poured a beer into the hole and sort of said, oh, you know, Hopefully one day you can repay me in some way, and we can, you know, we can share a, share a beer again. And yeah, it just it felt like, yeah, it felt right um, for Lee yeah. to get his get that win. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, <clears throat> everyone knows that Lee's one of the uh, ultimate nice guys in the paddock. And so uh, after 18 years of trying, uh, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, and Lee was yeah didn't put a foot wrong, and obviously he's been rewarded as well for with a uh, full time drive next year at uh, Grove Racing. So um, yeah, no, terrific. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was great to see. And obviously for Welcome to Andretti United, the team's first win since uh, at Bathurst since 2011 when they were the Holden Racing Team. So, yeah. But, um, I mean, Chaz as well, I just wanted to, to ask. I mean, so is this, like, you know, that was a pretty impressive statement for, for 2022. I mean, um, in terms of, uh, yeah, obviously fantastic pace, fantastic performance by the entire team. Uh, do, you, do you think next year could be the year for you guys? You know, you've had a couple of years now to to work each other out and all that sort of stuff. Do you think next year can be the year that, uh, yeah, there's some big things coming for Walkinshaw and Dreddy United? It's always hard to say. You know, you look at, um, I guess, Gizzy's performance this year, it was something pretty, he kind of blew us all out of the water, to be honest. You know, 14 wins to the season. He was strong a bunch across a bunch of different tracks. Um, it really makes everyone try to step the game up. So, you know, we can't really look into one race. You know, we look at SMP, for instance, we we still kind of struggled a little bit there and it really highlights that the different tracks that are in this championship across 12, 12 or so rounds, um, you've got to be strong across all of them. So um, I think we'll build, definitely build confidence for Bathurst. I mean, it's always the, the biggest race you want to win, but to, to have a proper assault, they're the kind of guys you're going up against like Izzy. He's just, he is in a, he is in a world of his own when he's feeling that car and that car's in the window. He is super hard to beat. Even when he's breathing down your neck at Bathurst, you know, you've got to pull some miracle out to try and keep that guy behind you. So we'll put our best foot forward. We'll work extremely hard like the whole team does every uh, every Christmas break. Uh, I think they'll have only quite a, a, probably a week off and they'll be back in there trying to get even more speed out of the car and neaten up a few things. And we'll, we'll try our hardest next year, there's no doubt about it. But we've got some really stiff competition. So um, we'll just see what we got. Is next year quite possibly going to be one of the, the toughest for the championship. You know, it's obviously the last year that we're going to have these Gen 2 cars. You know, I think it's fair to say that Anton Di Pasquale and Will Davison will, will certainly be on their A game. Shane's certainly got, not going to lose any speed. You've got your new teammate, Nick Perkett, who's probably going to give you a really good run for your money, I'm sure. You know, there are a lot of guys, you know, even at Tickford and, and Erebus who are extremely competitive at the moment. You guys have obviously made a step up in the team's championship though. So does that give you guys just that little bit of an edge over your competition? Oh, to be honest, man, we, I don't know. I'm getting too old now to worry about what everyone else is doing and trying to just focus on what we're doing. So um, as a team, full focus for us, just keep working on the package we've got. Obviously, everyone's got that mindset of focusing on Gen 3. But to be honest, being us, it's not a homologation team. It's probably a good thing focusing on this next year because we can just keep focusing on the package we got. So. We'll push forward. Obviously, getting Nick on board is is a massive um, leap forward for us. Obviously, the experience he brings from where he's been. Uh, it's also a pretty cool story for a bit of a homecoming for him. Obviously, Walkinshaw brought him through development series and all that kind of stuff and into the main game. So him coming home is going to be a great thing. Um, he's going to make me lift to another level. There's no secret about that. And hopefully, I can make him lift to another level too. So uh, we're really excited in, in the camp to, to get him. And then obviously the team's championship is something we would want to have a big assault on next year and trying to move up further in pit lane. We we're obviously able to move a few spots this year, which was fantastic. And that come down to raw car speed. And, and Bryce did a solid job as well. You know, definitely a Bathurst there and getting a top five position with Luffy. That was awesome to see for the team. So um, that really helped moving up a few spots. And it's, it's so much of a qualifying game at the moment you really need to to be qualifying up the front in these sprint races to have a chance of getting good points for the championship so 
to move a first a few forward really helps our position um, in, in qualifying and, and not worrying about so many cars in front of us and stuff. So, um, yeah, we'll just see what we got, man. We'll, we'll work hard in the off-season, try and tune the cars up, make it quicker. I'm sure Nick will bring some stuff to the table. That first test day is going to be super, super crucial. Um, and we'll go from there. How important is round one going to be at, at Newcastle? You know, you guys typically have gone pretty strong on, on street circuits. Is that the place where you sort of try and stamp your authority early on? Uh, I'm, I'm pumped to go to Newcastle. Last time Walkinshaw was there, they had some really quick cars. So I'm sure they'll dig back into the vault and look what they did then. Um, last time I was at Newcastle, I'd, I had a terrible run. So um, I'm really excited to be in this camp for there. And we'll see what we got. I don't know, man. It's too. I'm still got Christmas and New Year's to think about, and hanging out with my puppy dog and my beautiful partner. And racing is the last thing on my mind at the moment, to be honest. For sure. Now, I really appreciate your time, Chaz. Um, hope you enjoy the Christmas and New Year's break. Um, thanks, Connor, for for joining us. And yeah, Chaz, really appreciate your time as always. Cheers, guys. Rip it up. Have a good one. Well, that concludes another episode of KTM Summer Grill. Stay tuned for another episode tomorrow at SpeedCafe.com. As part of this year's KTM Summer Grill, each week KTM is giving away the perfect summer beach pack, which includes an umbrella, cap, gym bag and key holder. To enter the draw, head to speedcafe.com or hit the link in the description below.